Hey everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George here. We're taking a look at the 2023 Subaru Forester. It's the base model, the most entry level model you can get. Now this is the ice silver metallic. In the entry level Forester, you are limited on the colors you can get. You can't get the Cascade, Cascade Green Silica. You can't get the Crimson Red Pearl. There's some others you can't get. You get your black, white, silver, grays. Uh, you might even be able to get the green in it. I'd have to double check, but you are limited in your color. Now, same headlights as every other Forester. They're steering responsive LEDs. You do have that little LED daytime running right light strip up top there, marker lights. You do have the fog light bezel, but there, and you can pop out that cap and there is an accessory fog light kit you can get installed. It's powered by a 2.5 liter four cylinder boxer engine producing 182 horsepower. No issue with the power, plenty of zip. I've never had someone come back saying they feel that the Forester is underpowered for their needs when they're looking for a vehicle in this category. Now with the entry level, you do get steel wheels with hubcaps. I have lots of clients that swap their winter tires onto this and then buy a nice set of alloys for their all seasons if they're a two per two tire wheel set kind of person. Fuel door on the passenger side. If your driver door is unlocked, this is unlocked and you just push it pop open. When it's locked, this little pin extends and locks in the hole right here. So when the driver door is locked, it's locked. When the driver door is unlocked, that's unlocked. Same size as every other Forester. You get those C-shaped or boomerang shaped rear lights, tail lights. In the back, there's a lot of storage with a big boxy rear end, you would expect that. Easy to fill with storage. You can stack things to the roof. Now up here, we have two hooks. They call them grocery bag hooks. I probably wouldn't put grocery bags on there because you have a weight rating of three kilograms or 6.6 6 pounds. Sorry, not 6.6, .6, just six. Um, if you're hanging something and driving, it's probably gonna be in your rear view. I can see this being used if you're at an event or you're camping or something like that. We've got grocery bag hooks on either side. 12 volt power point for any charging needs. Hard physical tie downs. You have one in each corner of the rear here to secure awkward cargo. And underneath, we've got some storage along with your spare tire and all of the tools needed to change it. You do have an eye bolt right there that you can screw into this little cap right here. And there is one on the front passenger side. It's a little bit different shaped, but that's a recovery point for you. But you got a super, so you probably won't need it. It'll be for pulling someone else out. Another hook, again, you'd use that when it's popped up, but you're in a vent or something, you need to put a coat hanger or something on there. That's how I can see it being used. Backup camera's right here. It does have its own little washer, so you can clean the backup camera without getting outside of the vehicle. I'll show you that on the inside. It's very, very handy. Because of the boxiness of the Forester, you end up with some nice, large windows. Virtually no blind spots in these. And I'll give you a pan around when I'm sitting in the driver's seat. But the visibility is great in these. Passenger room in the second row. Great leg room, great headroom. I'm a taller guy, 6'2". I fit in the back seat comfortably. Now, entry level does not get the fold down armrest out of the center. You have to go up to a two ring to get that. You do have a little storage cubby and there is a map back pocket on the rear passenger seat, not on the rear driver's seat side of the driver's seat. You got bottle holders, child locks. All of the Foresters do come with these roof rails with the integrated tie downs, front and rear. Uh, you can get the crossbars as an accessory. Your Subaru dealer should carry them. We almost always have them in stock. If we don't, it's a couple days. Power windows, locks, mirrors, along with window lock. We've got bottle holder and storage. This is the only trim level that comes with the manual pa adjustment passenger seat. So I'm pumping it down. You probably can't see it because the camera shape shaking, but it is going down. It is manual adjustment for all of it. By the driver's left knee, we have the ability to turn off the steering responsive headlights. So if you don't like the headlights swiveling when you turn and illuminating the path, you can just keep them straight just by pressing it and deactivating it. We have a scroll wheel that controls the brightness of our gauges and radio. And then we have the ability to turn off the start stop. Let's press it, little A goes orange there. That means it's deactivated. Now, the steering wheel, tilt and telescopic, you just pull down and up, down, tilt, as well as telescopic. 
So you can adjust it to drivers of varying arm lengths and heights. Headlights, switch, defaults to auto. You can't accidentally turn your headlights off, which is awesome. I love it. I've seen so many people drive around without their headlights on, especially this time of year. Left-hand side of the steering wheel has our Bluetooth and audio controls, make and take calls, control the volume of the calls and music, info button, We'll change the small screen up here. So you have three little measurements. You've got thermometer, you've got average speed, and your clock. Every time I press it, it's gonna change the middle one. Doesn't give you a whole bunch more information, but the estimated distance to empty is pretty handy. Right-hand side has our adaptive cruise control and our lane centering. So when I turn that on, I get an image of the Forester there in the center, and you'll see there's four bars all the way down to one bar. That's the follow distance behind the vehicle ahead of you that you'll follow at if you catch up while using cruise best thing ever. I didn't think I'd like it, but at the end of a day of driving, long road trip, I'm far less fatigued. Same thing using the lane centering. Just turned it off and back on again. Above 60 kilometers an hour. If the cameras can see the road lines, it'll illuminate those gray lines on either side white. And if you get close, it'll start giving you gentle steering input. It's not going to rip the wheel out of your hand. It, we're not hands-free driving. We're not like a Tesla. It's a nice aid. And again, I didn't think I would like it, but it's beneficial. Second half of a long day. Two different drive modes, intelligent and sport. So you can see on the bottom left of the center screen, it says P for park. Just to the right of that is an I for intelligent. I press the S button, goes to sport mode. And you'll notice that line gets a little sharper, that yellow line. You're gonna accelerate fast. Your RPMs are gonna sit a little higher, use a little bit more fuel. It's for more spirited driving, essentially. Over here, we have our infotainment screen, still covered in the plastic because this one just came in. Uh, all touch screen, or we have the physical buttons below. Still have a CD player. I know it's kind of crazy. Your radio, you can get a Sirius XM capabilities with the entry level. You do get a three month trial with the Subaru for SXM. Apps, you've got wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Those USBs are ahead of the shifter. I'll show you that here in a second. And when you put it in reverse, backup camera pops up. You can see the top of the bumper there. You have something to relate to. As I turn the wheel, the orange lines move, show you where you're gonna end up. And if I wanted to clean it, I just twist this end piece for the wiper back and it drains over top. It's great. There's uh, another video that's gonna be coming out. Uh, this was covered in snow this morning and I tested it out. It worked really, really well. So look for that in the next couple days. Down below here, we have our climate controls. We've got the direction of our airflow, turn on our heated mirrors and back window, you've got your fan strength and you've got the temperature. Also where you turn on the air conditioning. Below that in the cubby, we've got two USB ports and an aux port in addition to a 12 volt outlet for any charging. So the USBs are used for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You can use it for charging your device, listening to music, plug in a USB drive with music. Aux is obviously just for music. And this is rubberized. So the idea is you can put your device in there and it'll hopefully stop it from sliding around as much. It is an automatic transmission. We do have drive and we have low gearing. So you do not get the paddle shifters in this entry level. You don't get to manually select your gear. It just puts it in on the lower range. If you're going down something super steep, you can put that on at the top and it'll help hold you back. Below that, parking brake, pull up to turn it on. My foot is not on the brake and I push down. It says to press the brake, foot on the brake, push down, parking brake comes off. We have AVH here, which is a brake holder for construction, drive-through, and rush hour traffic in a place that isn't print storage. Heated seats, both high and low for the driver and passenger, and with the cloth seats, they heat up really, really quickly, which is great in the weather that we've been experiencing here. That negative 40 we had last week, this is the best thing ever. Now, we have X mode and traction control from this dial. So X mode is like 4x4 low in a pickup, changes your transmission gearing, your throttle response, locks the all-wheel drive 50-50, only works up to 40 kilometers an hour after that it kicks out and goes back to all-wheel drive, but to turn it on, I push it, comes up with X mode. You get the little rough terrain mode icon and downhill assist icon. It even pops up there, top left corner. So 99% of people are never going to need to use it, but it is a nice aid. It makes a very capable vehicle more capable. To disable, I push down again, comes off. If I twist it to the left, it turns off traction control. And I can have traction control off and have X mode engaged. So you've got some, you've got some ability to get unstuck if you find yourself in a sticky situation. Up top here, these are our eyesight cameras. So Subaru uses two color stereo eyesight cameras to do their adaptive cruise, automatic emergency braking, all of the safety stuff. And this is the most up-to-date, this is eyesight 4.0. Wider field of view, recognizes pedestrians and cyclists more, 
much more quickly. It's a great system. Up top here, we have lane sway assist. So this will start beeping at you if you change lanes or cross lines without signaling. Right hand side here, automatic emergency braking. So here in BC, that saves you 10% on your basic insurance. We've got our light switch. So it's either off or set to door. So if it's set to door and I open the door, LED lights come on, same thing there. And these map lights, you can just press and hold or press to turn on, I wouldn't, shouldn't say hold. Sunglass storage. And then we have card holders on both visors along with an extender. So you can block the sun a little bit more effectively, which is nice. Vanity mirror, no light on the entry level. So that is a quick look at the 2023 Subaru Forester entry level or base model, whatever you want to call it. Thanks for watching. This is probably going to be the final video of 2022. Hope you guys all have a great new year and I look forward to seeing you guys in 2023. Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.